Welcome, everybody, back to another episode of The Basement Binge. This is going to be a blast. You saw the title. You know what you're listening to, but I am way excited to talk about it. Fast Five, we are more than halfway through the Fast and Furious franchise, which is crazy to me how quick this thing is going. Um, but once again, I'm joined by the great Matt from Matt Goes to the Movie. Thank you again for being here, Matt. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so excited. It's, you know, Fast Five, the, the ridiculousness ensues, so to speak. So um, I'm just excited to, to talk about this movie. Yeah, I remember when we were planning it, you specifically talked about how you really enjoyed this one. And I've always heard good things about this one. Of all of them that are talked about, this is one of them that I've heard the most good about. So I've been excited to get to this one for a long time. So we will get started in our very, very first segment, Two Cents. Everybody knows this is a spoiler-free two-minute reaction that you give to the film, you know, up to two minutes. So, Matt, I'll let you go first. You know, what are your spoiler-free thoughts about Fast Five? Yeah, spoiler-free. Uh, this one's a little bit easier to talk about, uh, you know, to talk without spoilers in this segment for me. And going back and re-watching it, I kind of watched it with fresh eyes. And even though I know how ridiculous this series is, man, did I have some like laugh out moments during this movie of this is where it really started to jump the shark, so to speak, with just, uh, all right, so everything's out the window, physics, logic, whatever you (laughs) think should be acceptable. It's just, it doesn't exist in this world. and. I love it. It embraces the crazy and absolutely runs with it. Um, But again, with that being said, this is a movie that the joke family, there's some real strong themes about family and these characters in this universe and how much they care about each other. I think there's actually some really strong scenes. Um, in this movie that I really enjoy that I think helps balance some of the craziness. That's one of the things I really, really like about it is to me, there is a real sense of family in this movie. There's some actual scenes that you can grasp onto that have meaning and have relation to them. And then you can turn around and just say, well, that was ridiculous to look at, but man, was it fun. So to me, this is a perfect blend of both categories. And I really do like, I love every second of this movie. Yeah, that, I mean, great two cents. I, I d- didn't mean to cut you off if I did, but hey, I just want to kind of add on to what you said. I feel like this is, just to kind of get into my two cents here, one of the best well, so far, I'm going to say it this way. So far into the Fast and Furious, this is the best Fast and Furious movie. Not like, and I don't mean that like, oh, this is the best movie ever. You know, we'll get to that more later. But of everything that makes up a Fast and Furious movie, this is the best one. Like, this is the best at the ideas of theme. This is the best the ideas of driving, I would say. This is the best with the ideas of the characters of that each one of these actors are. This is the best with like, ludicrous action that is super engaging and entertaining to watch it's super well made just like ridiculousness like it leans into the ridiculousness and knows exactly what type of movie it's making and takes itself seriously enough that it's enjoyable and engaging and not like stupid but also not it 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 knows what it is and lets it be that and I, i'm just seriously impressed how good it really is but i mean it's also just like totally crazy like th- this this is a nuts movie um it's and i love that we literally pick up where fast four you know fast and furious picked off and the continuation of it that this feels like you know because we've talked about the last few films if you're listening to this episode you've probably listened to the others sequels and the continuity between sequels within this series uh is a weak point up till now i would say you know like the, the the difference between Fast One and Fast Two they're like not even connected. And then Tokyo Drift is was like an anthology film, and then Fast and Furious was like a soft reboot of it. This is like the first time where it feels like a genuine continuation of the events and stories. And the action is good. I I would say that Justin Lin his style is rubbing off of me. I 
Last episode, I mentioned how I thought he directed a Star Trek movie. It was Star Trek Beyond. And when I watched that for the first time, I, I didn't really like it. I think if I were to watch it now, I would love it because Justin Lin directs action, particularly like kinetic action is like with high movement, you know, whether it's a moving car or a motorcycle, he, he directs it very, very well. And it's, he's very proficient at it. And I, I love that. I love that the rock is involved in this. Like his character is super fun. I, I love that. It's like a heist movie type thing. Like this feels, this has all the same elements that makes like an ocean movies fun, like an oceans 11 or whatever it is. All the same elements of that this film has as well, while also being a totally ridiculous Fast and Furious movie. There's tons of practical stunts, like the characters are great, and, and also, like you said, the, the themes of family are actually, like, feel legitimate and fleshed out. But that was probably over two minutes. I'm just, like, really impressed with it. Like, this is, because it's easy for people to like the Fast and Furious movie. Like, I have no problem if you love these movies, if you think they're the best thing ever. But, like, most people who like the Fast and Furious movies are like, yeah, I like the Fast and Furious movies, but they kind of are willing to admit the not greatness of them, you know, like the flaws that they have, where I feel like this one legitimately is high quality. And I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Like, for example, if you've been listening to these episodes, I'm sorry, this is way longer than two minutes, Matt, but like Tokyo Drift and Fast and Furious, like I was impressed with how much I enjoyed it while still totally recognizing like this is a mess. It has tons of mistakes and it's not very strong, but I really enjoyed myself. This one, I'm like, wow, I really enjoyed myself and I'm impressed with how proficiently made it is. I, it, it was great to watch. So that was a very, very long two cents. But I, I'm just like, wow, th- this is going to be a great episode. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, you know, just to piggyback really quick. It, it, this is where you really start to see where Justin Lin helps this franchise as a director. Um, which makes me excited that he's back for Fast 9 because I really think when you watch the movies and know the ones that he has been a part of, you instantly can see the difference in what's going on and how he brings it to the screen. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really, really excited. I feel like I said this the last few episodes and I, I feel like this is just the best way to explain it. I feel like I'm understanding the language of the cinematic language of a Fast and Furious movie. But learn, like being proficient in that language or not, this is a great movie to watch. Like, yeah, I, I'm really, really impressed with this film. So that's it for Two Cents because obviously we have so many positive things to say and really exciting things to talk about. So I want to get into the spoilers. But before we do that, just a very, very brief announcement. As always, it really helps out the show if you could go to podchaser.com slash the basement binge and leave a review. Or if you could share this episode with somebody that you like. If there's somebody who likes the Fast and Furious movies or who doesn't and needs convincing, send them to this episode. Then I'd, I'd appreciate it. That helps out the show a lot. Additionally, I wanted to give Matt a, a brief minute to, to plug his show once again, particularly your Dark Knight episode. Oh my gosh, I just listened to it. I just left a review on Podchaser because it was so good. That was a great, great episode. So before Matt plugs his show, if you're looking for a good episode to start with, I would start with the Batman Begins episode and then... The Dark Knight, and then listen to all the others because all great. But that that was a great episode, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you know, Harrison kind of mentioned, uh, Matt goes to the movies is another podcast where you can listen to my opinion about movies. Uh, a lot of those episodes, Harrison has helped me with. We've done Prometheus together. Uh, I've done Bumblebee with him. We've done Valerian. Um, just a lot of fun uh, collaborating on these episodes, but. I appreciate your kind words about The Dark Knight. That was a lot of fun to do. Uh, It also marked the um, debut, so to speak, of a new format for the show that I had been kind of working on. And uh, it starts with The Dark Knight episode and will continue going forward. Uh, Spiral from the Book of Saw will be the next um, individual episode that is uploaded, um, you know, with that format going forward. So it was it was fun coming up with some new ideas for the show and the dark knight is the first one for any longtime listeners of the show that starts with that new format so uh hope you like it It was a lot of fun doing it and yeah it's it's been a lot of fun with that podcast and anybody that's come over from the basement binge and you know listen to matt goes to the movies as well honestly thank you so much because it's it's been a ton of fun like i said yeah i really do appreciate being here matt it's always great to talk to you or to listen to your podcast so of course 
like Matt said, Matt goes to the movies wherever you get your podcasts. Also linked in the show notes. There'll be a link to his his site as well. So definitely check out his episodes. They're tons of fun. Okay. With those announcements, the two cents out of the way, we can get into the spoilers. But I forgot to do this before the spoilers. We're going to do our Rummage for the Rotten segment, which is the segment which you have when there's another guest on the show or another individual besides myself, where we get to guess who we think is going to like this film least, whoever the rotten will be. Even if we like it, the we give it the same reels out of five. We're going to rate it out of reels because that's Matt's thing. He does reels on his show. So we're bringing that over here for the rotten. Um, but yeah, we're going to guess who we think is going to give it the least amount of reels. And that person will be the rotten. Even if like we both say five reels, but one person's like 4.99 reels and the other one's a solid five, then, you know. So, whatever. Not, not, that's not meant to be foreshadowing. I, think, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I genuinely don't know who is it going to be because you were one of the reasons that I was most excited about this episode. And we intentionally did some shuffling around of the schedule so you could be here for it because I wanted to know what you had to say about it. Like I, this was an episode that I really wanted you to be on. And then I watched it and I was like, Oh yeah, like I get it. So I, I don't even have a guess. Do you, do you have any idea, you know, spitballing? Honestly, I, it's, it feels like it's going to be like cutting hair, so to speak, or pulling teeth because I, it's funny listening to you in the beginning talk about this because it, it, listeners, if you know, you've been listening to these episodes, you know how hard it was at first for Harrison to get to this point based on <laughs> the first few movies that he watched. Um, and to hear you almost like giddy in a way to talk about fast five i'm having a hard time saying like again is so who likes it the least out of you know again like i I don't know if this is how it goes but you're 4.99 reels and i'm 4.965 like where's the rotten in that so exactly uh, you're you're guessing i'm gonna flip a coin on the table and if it's heads it's me if it's tails it's you like i i don't know yeah it's just up in the air really yeah which is fun i like it that's one of the things that i mean like for example even with tokyo drift and even fast and furious fast four whatever it's called i feel like we both enjoy those to a larger extent i mean definitely tokyo drift more than rob but like talking with those like it was easy for me to go in and have an idea like someone here is gonna dislike this now, I don't know. Like that's an exciting thing to have a movie where you can be confident that the people you're talking about it aren't going to have too many complaints. Like that. That's that's an exciting conversation to have. So who's the rotten? I don't know. One of us. I I really don't have a guess. I mean, if I, for the purpose of actually giving a guess, I think that I might like it like just slightly less. But that's just because it's my first time viewing it, not because it's any less good. But really we're going to be split in hair. So there's really no rotten, which is like one of the best things that ever happened to this segment. So even our, even our pal, uh, who's not with us on this episode, Robbie rotten could ruin this. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I, I don't think he could. And I, I wish he could have been here because he could have redeemed himself from that new nickname, but you know, he, he missed the boat. So, okay, we'll move on to the next segment here. Pick, your poison. So this is where we talk about how we would interact with this film based off this watch. You know, are we never going to watch it again? Very self-explanatory. Next is to stream it. You know, it's on a stream service you're already subscribed to. You're just looking for something to watch and it happens to be there. You'd click on it. Above that is rent. In the, you'd be willing to pay a few bucks and watch it again. Top of the list is to buy it. Watch it as many times as you'd like. Matt, I'll let you go first. Yeah, this is... <sighs> This is an own and not in the vein of the other movies that we've talked about where, well, because this is a series, I've come so far with it. It's something that's like imprinted in me, kind of much like you, Harrison, where I'll have to own this series. Fast five for me. If I only liked this movie in the series, I would own this to watch it again if there was no other way 
to be able to consume this media more than once. So maybe that's some foreshadowing into who's the rotten. Um, <laughs> but I would 100% own this movie if it was a standalone. It's not in the same vein, like I said, is, well, I'm going to own it because of the series. No, I would 100% independently own this movie if I had to to do it in that vein. Oh, yeah. I, I'm right there with you. Like I've kind of talked about this before, how it's hard to rank these because I'm still trying to flesh out for myself if I'm going to buy them or not, you know, as a collection, so to speak. But this is one definitely that I want in my library to watch again because, I don't know, for like example, Fa Fast and Furious, the fourth one, I really, really like that one, but I've already forgotten it like 90%. And so I don't like, if I think about it, granted, it's only been a few days, but if I thought about like, oh, I should watch that again, I'd be like, well, what's the point? Like, I don't, I don't feel negative things towards it, but I don't feel like an excitement to hit play again. Where this, I'm like, oh yeah, like I would watch this again. Like I, I would have the urge to pull this off the shelf and watch it, uh, it because it is that that good. So yeah, this is this is definitely one of those that collection aside, I would buy this to watch. So yeah, I think <laughs> there's no rotten here at all. So. Yeah, simple, simple pick your poison. Obviously, we really, really like this film. So let's kind of get into what actually we like about this film. We've been doing the dance around the bush. You know, let's get to it, the chase with the next segment, Live Up. So this is where, personally for myself, having never seen the film, I'll talk about my expectations going in. Was it able to live up to those expectations, good or bad? And then I'll give Matt a chance to kind of talk about the legacy of the film as someone who's enjoyed this franchise for a longer amount of time and He's kind of my resident expert on the Fast and Furious movies here in this podcast family of ours. And, you know, is it a good legacy that it has? Is it maintaining that? Yeah, Matt's always good at, at, at that. So I'll, I'll go first with, with my expectations. This is the film that I knew the most about. I've seen clips of this chase with the vault where the two cars are pulling the vault. I've seen clips of that tons of times uh there's a lot about it that i really really like i've just heard that this is one of the best ones multiple times like i the only scene that i've really seen is the the safe then i knew that that was in this movie and that's about it and then i knew that it was like one of the best that that i mean going back to our rankings that we did forever ago for example having never seen any of these films before I both Matt and I put it at number two. I mean, Matt had seen him before, but before hearing Matt's ranking, I also put this at number two right below Furious 7 because I had heard such good things about it and not just like, oh yeah, it's like a fun, dumb movie, but like it's a good movie. Um, and so it had pretty high expectations to live, to live up to. Was it able to? Yes, 100%. It was exactly what it should have and could have been. You know, whether it was the scene with the, the safe or whether it was everything that led up to that or whether it's the scene where the team comes back together. Like, how can you not have fun in that scene when they're, they're deciding that they're going to rob the guy? And I think it's either Vin uh, or Paul Walker. I don't remember. They're like, then we're going to need a team. And like the music picks up and it's like, how can you not be having fun when you're watching this? You know, and then everybody shows up and like the camaraderie and banter between everybody there, especially Roman. Like, Roman Pierce was a character who I really didn't like in Too Fast, Too Furious. I thought he was annoying. In this one, he's hilarious. Like, every, like I like these people. And, I, and I'll talk about more in this in the final segment, but, like, one of the biggest things that we've talked about a lot in the franchise inquiry segment is how has this been so successful? And one of the biggest reasons that we talk about is that people like these characters. People like this crazy family that is the Fast and Furious family. Watching this film multiple times, I found myself endeared to this crazy ragtag group of people you know whether it was a moment when vin diesel standing there giving his funny smile that i think he looks totally ridiculous but it's like the most dom dom toretto smile ever and like there's a relationship between him and brian o'connor that i just like love i i love the relationship between brian and mia there, there was just so much about the ideas of family the ideas of crazy action that is fast and furious that this film finally lives up to all of those jokes and stereotypes about the fast franchise in the best way you know additionally there was just tons of effort to make it uh with 
practical effects and they are incredible to watch. Like, you know, some guy who thinks he's the hot shot in Hollywood compared the Avengers films to uh, theme parks, <laughs> amusement rides. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about at all. I'm just kidding. And I feel like the, this is like a really, really successful film with being that in the best way possible. Like it, it was really just a lot of fun to go on this ride, you know? And Matt, you also talked about that. Sorry, this is a little long, but the other expectation I had is that you mentioned this was the film where The Rock shows up because apparently a fan had told Vin Diesel that he should bring in The Rock and that the, the, the fan thought that they'd be together, fun on screen together. And oh my gosh, were they right? Like The Rock shows up and I was like, Obviously, I've seen later films. I know about Hobbs and Shaw. I know that he's in Fast 9. Like, like I knew that he was kind of with the team. So when he shows up and he's a cop hunting him down, I'm like, what? Like, it like kind of put me through a spin. But like every scene he's in with his sweat just dripping off him like crazy, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. I was like, this, like, I love to watch this. Like, I, I get it. I like it. You know, I've had the moments that are small moments, but this, this film and so many moments more like, I get it. I get why people like this series. I get why it's made so much money. I get it. I get why Furious 7 was such a big deal to people. I get why Paul Walker passing away was heartbreaking to people. Like, I get it. And it was just, it was fun to have fun watching the film just on its own. But it was also fun to get it, as I've been saying, of what it all means. And it was just, I, I'm, obviously, if you, you can't tell, I had a great time watching this. But Matt, what, what are kind of your thoughts about the legacy of the film or, or your own expectations about it? Yeah. Um, you know, I, again, like seeing this for the first time when it first came out, you know, the thought of it was kind of when he was going back and forth on what he wanted to be called, but Dwayne Johnson or The Rock and, you know, being growing up a kid uh, um, a, a wrestling fan as a kid, like I had already known who the rock was way before I was already a fan of his, I, uh, you know, he was so much fun to watch during my, my WWE craze days when I was growing up and seeing him become an actor and then watching him grow as an actor and things like that. You know, I had so many expectations for her, for him coming into this franchise and seeing some of the ridiculousness in the trailer and just being involved. I, I had really high hopes for this movie during my initial watch when it was released in theaters. And even back then, it did everything I wanted and more. I was like, God, this was so much fun. Like, I remember walking out of the theater and thinking that, that this was an absolute blast. I had an amazing time. And I still, to this day, have a blast watching this. Like, nothing in rewatches for me falters. I don't get any less enjoyment out of this. The, I don't know, maybe if I had to honestly think back on it, this is like the seventh or eighth time that I've seen this movie. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, I don't, have any like I don't have different feelings about it in a negative way like eh, well it's that isn't as funny as I remember it or that wasn't as good or the movie ends and I still am like yeah that was fun like none of that has faltered over the years and over the rewatches so it certainly lived up to the expectations it has stayed on that course over time and Harrison, you know, talking about like the legacy of the franchise, uh, again, you're seeing it, you know, why this has stood and lasted as long as it has right now, because you can't help but adopt this on screen family as sort of your family, so to speak, in a weird, like, funny way to say that. Mm -hmm. But you just said, like, Geez, I care about these guys. Roman Pierce, who I could not stand in Too Fast, Too Furious. I thought his character was terrible. Right. He, he's great. You root for him. You have Han, who you're, you know, was instantly a fan favorite in Tokyo Drift. And it's just, oh my God. The the bond that I talked about with Dom and Brian, 
is even more relevant in here. The bond between Dom and Mia and Brian and Mia's relationship and Ludacris, who, again, I mean, I don't think we can not <laughs> laugh <laughs> about the weirdness of, you know, this was a guy who ran a garage and was you know, announcing jet ski races through a megaphone. And now all of a sudden he's some super tech guy um, <laughs> out of nowhere. Like, I don't know when he took those classes or where that skill was in too fast. Um, so I get it. I totally embrace like some of the ridiculousness of where these characters are and what their skills are compared to what the character was, but it works. You just, you can't help but root for this ragtag group and feel something when they might be in danger or when they laugh, you laugh or when they're emotional, you understand why they're emotional. Um, I like, I am getting giddy just talking about this fast family because this is a movie that makes you root for these guys and you just have a, well, and girls and just have a good time. Like uh, uh, again, for me and Harrison, I think it's the same thing. Not everything has to be, I put quotations an Oscar worthy performance and like, Oh, critics say like this should win awards. I, I just sometimes want something that makes me feel good and enjoy cinema. Yeah. This, this is it to a T. This oh, makes me enjoy cinema. I a hundred percent agree. I mean, I'm, as you've been talking about this, I've been thinking about so many moments of the film have been flashing through my mind, but one in particular with that last part you talked about is the scene between Brian and Dom when Brian realizes he's a dad, which I like whoever wrote that into this film. Great choice like that. That is just I love everything about that. But when he's talking to Dom, he's like, do you remember your dad? And yet you know, Vin Diesel's like, I remember everything about my father. <laughs> like the way he says, I, I thought was hilarious. But I, I like felt that moment between the two of them. And I was like, I love what is happening on the screen right here. Like, do I think that these are two super talented actors who are just like the best in the world and this is the most powerful emotional response I've ever had. No, like that, but that's not why I'm watching it and that's not what I've ever expected it to be and it's not what I need it to be. Like these feel like brothers who I am in this, you know, weird camaraderie with and they're having a moment together through the craziness of life like all of us are. There's a, there's an, a strange authenticity that it has while also not being like the, you know, Oscar type authenticity that people look at foreign films, you know? So it, 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 it's, it is great to just enjoy. I mean, like even like those two characters, I'm so sorry. I really don't know what their names are. The two Spanish guys, Leo and Santos, I think that's their names on IMDb. I'm totally guessing they're hilarious. Like, like everything they say, I don't even speak Spanish. And like, like sometimes the subtitle doesn't even show up and I would still laugh. Like they were just funny. Like the the, the two of them, you know, why you always got to be so negative? Like it's just, I, I thought, I just couldn't agree more with what you said. This is one of those films that reminds you why it's fun to watch films. Like, like people fall in love with movies because it's fun. I don't think that many people are going to be like, oh, I fell in love with movies because I watched this Oscar worthy performance and like, all that snobbery. Like, maybe you fell in love with that at some point, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think that this is its own thing to a T that I, for myself, I'm mainly saying this for myself, need to recognize that I can appreciate more. Like, sometimes I feel bad. Like, thinking about what I'm going to give this reel-wise, like, how many reels am I going to give this? I kind of feel bad what I want to give it, and I, like, justify why it should be lower. But I'm like, no, like, th this was great to watch. I loved watching this. And I, I had never, ever thought that that was going to happen in this Fast and Furious series. I did not. Like, I knew that this one had high esteem. And so I assumed that it would be good. I just did not expect it to be as good as it is and as enjoyable as it is. Yeah, it's, again, I, I, I don't think you can say it any better than enjoyable. It's it's just plain enjoyable, <laughs> and that that's yeah. that's all I need sometimes. <laughs> yeah, especially with a Fast and Furious movie, you know, I, I love that. So, um, yeah, I, I I don't really know where else to say this, so I'm just gonna gonna tag it on in here. Like, 
Like, there's just some things that I love, like even with how the subtitles are done, like they're not just words at the bottom of the screen center frame, you know, like they appear over the character who's speaking, they move with the character, characters wipe them off screen, they come into the screen behind a character, like that didn't need to happen, but it was really fun. And I, I just think that there's so much about that that is just really, really engaging. And I, I can't say this enough. Like, like every part of this film that makes a Fast and Furious movie fun is like firing all cylinders. Like great racing, ridiculous action is all there. And the ridiculous action is filmed and done practically with really great style to it. The emotions of family and the motivations of the characters are really strong and like the foundation of this film and like i was impressed by how much the theme of family doesn't feel like a joke like when vince comes back and 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 there, there well there's multiple times these came back kind of like the first time he comes back and brian goes to fight him and and dom yells at him he's like if he said he didn't do it he didn't do it like that was a great moment. And then later when Vince comes back a second time and there's kind of like some, some tensity and then Dom says, are you hungry? And it was like a callback to the very, very first film. Like it just, I don't know. I just, I had no idea that I would care that it was a callback to the first film. And I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I'm just kind of bewildered by how, not how much, positive things I have to say because again I feel like I'm repeating myself but how much I want to say like I, I'm, I'm having a hard time processing those things and actually getting them out but I want to say as many positive things as I can about it because again I don't think that I I never thought that I would care like oh hey this is referencing the first film in like a really powerful way showing the themes of family the relationship of these individuals and characters never thought that that would happen not once like I thought this was just going to be dumb the entire way and I just I mean, I'm very impressed. Yeah. I mean, you talk about, uh, you know, emotion and, you know, if you don't mind it, when Mia, when they're going to split up and it's Dom, Brian and Mia and, you know, Dom's like, we're going to go this way. And, uh, and she's like, I'm pregnant you for a second. Like, honestly, I forget that it's a character saying she's pregnant to this character brian because the way that he reacts to her being pregnant gee i would have thought that's really his baby for god's sakes like yeah jordana brewster just told paul walker that she's legitimately having their child and it, it's just like you feel good for them and then the way that dom just kind of subtly sits there and they all you know she's like promise me we're like we're not gonna split up like it sounds so silly to say, but you just can't help but feel in this moment, you can't help but feel good for these characters. Like, what? like, yes, like, what a great moment for you. Like, what a great moment for you. And in the same vein, though, if, if you don't mind me skipping to this part, oh, of course, take it away. The group steals four cop cars. OK, they steal <laughs> they, they steal four cop cars. But then as I'm watching this movie, I just, my inner voice stops and goes, first of all, nobody's out, <laughs> like nobody's out at night and they drag race stolen cop cars with the sirens bursting <laughs> for a million dollar bet. And I just go, this is the most ridiculous nonsense ever. It's so far fetched and it's so silly, but guess what? I'm grinning ear to ear now because I love it and oh. I I don't care. I like and to have something that is so dumb and ridiculous on paper and you just don't care. And again, I'm gonna repeat what I said earlier. Just it's a good time. Like I just I had a good time. I don't care that it's dumb. I don't care that it doesn't make sense. Fine. Just entertain me and good lord, I'll repeat it again. This movie does that all the time. Oh yeah. I I agree with you. That that like 
when they line up for the cop car drag race, I was like, what the like, like in my head, I was like, really, this is happening. But then they start to talk about like they're wagering how much money it is and the way it's filmed with one of them lining up one at a time and the way Roman's talking on the, the PA system, everything about it. I was like, yeah, like this, this is totally got to happen. Like there is no other way that these characters would do these things. And, and it it is great to watch. And you're like rooting for Brian to finally beat Dom. And then he does. And then they joke with him that it was like a baby gift. You know, like it's just. And, and later they come back and like the celebration that everybody has when Mia tells them that they're pregnant. Like, man, that was another great moment. I just. And and, and I love that what you brought up earlier when, when Mia tells Brian and Dom and that she makes him promise that they're not going to split up. How that stays true for the entire film. I, I mean. It's just great. And I, I'll say one last thing about this. I mean, we really could talk about it forever. If you got more to say, definitely say it. Don't feel like I'm rushing you out of it. But I just, one thing about this film that I found really, really fun is it's a heist movie. I feel like as I've been watching this, I'm seeing that like each film of the Fast and Furious movie so far feels like a different, like a Fast and Furious take of a different genre. You know, I talked a little bit about that in Tokyo Drift. And this definitely feels like not just a heist movie, but like an Oceans movie. Like the same type of motivation, the same ridiculousness of the heist, the same like training type, like we got to get these ridiculous skills down thing, the same type of prep, the same type of like last minute things that go astray, the same type of getaway that's like a fake out that's like some totally fun thing that it reveals later. Like it, it feels like a great Oceans film. And one of the things that is is important for these type of heist films is that you have to want the people stealing to succeed. Like, it's not a good film if you want them to get caught. And one of the reasons that I want them to succeed is because of something that you said earlier. You can't help but feel good for these people. When they're in a room together and enjoying themselves, when they get away, they they make the money, you can't help but feel like, yeah, like they deserve it. Like I'm happy that they're happy type thing. Which, again, as these words come out of my mouth, I'm like, are we really talking about a Fast and Furious movie? <laughs> this, I'm just, I'm bewildered. Yeah, and, you know, everything that we've mentioned, it's not even, he's briefly been talked about. It, it's not even talking about Dwayne Johnson slash The Rock's character, Hobbs, who is fantastic and has great scenes with Diesel. And, you can have these moments where it's absolutely ridiculous, but then you can have the confrontation scene where, he, you know, he goes to arrest him and he's like, I don't feel under arrest. He's like, oh, it'll mm-hmm. sink soon, boy. Just let it. Um, it. And there's actually like, I still rewatching it. I had tension there when they're face to face and there's been memes about that and stupid little things that like make me laugh. But like in the moment when that scene's happening, I'm like, there's tension, like there's tension there because it does feel like on screen, like there's two alpha males who aren't going to budge and it's interesting. And then when they finally track down the team and they get into that fight and it's, feels so visceral and physical and raw when Dom and Hobbs are fighting and just going through walls and slamming each other into things okay. like it, then you get that aspect of the movie and it's like okay this all, like again that also works there's i don't feel that there's an element of this movie that falls flat on me at all and again we're we're talking about the Fast and the Furious for <laughs> anybody that might be confused if we've just ventured off into another movie. Like, no, we're still talking about Fast Five. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, there something that makes fight scenes and stunt scenes better is emotion involved in them, like actual motivation and emotion that feels realistic. So, for example, that uh, four way cop car drag race that they have. Totally feels like a bunch of dudes out for the night who are all into cars having some ridiculous fun for a million bucks. You know, like that, that feels like something that they would do. When Dom and Hobbs are fighting, their fighting style, their reactions feel serious. When Dom sees Mia and his eyes like open wide and he like 
gets this strength to stand up, I was like, well, yeah, like that's Dom. Or another, earlier in that fight when he's kind of pinned on the car and uh, Hobbs has his, his arm kind of pinned behind his back. Like how many times have we seen that exact position as like the final move on the guy? Like th- that's a hard thing to get out of legitimately. And Dom's like alpha male attitude that like, I'm not going down no matter what. And like he gets up, like it just feels so, I don't know, visceral, I would like to steal your word. I, and I, I'm very, very impressed with it. I keep saying that because I'm, I am. <laughs> and I don't know how to say it any other way because it's just, I knew that this one was going to be good. I knew that the chase with the safe was going to be good. I knew that there was a little bit more practical effects. But I, I don't think that I was prepared for how good it was at all. And, and that's not like a diss on the Fast and Furious franchise at all. I know I, I tend to do that a lot. But there's films that you just don't think that they're going to come together in this way. And when they do, you're just like, what? Like, this, like when, it, when it hits, it hits. You know, it's firing on all cylinders. And it's, it's a great, great film to watch. So if you are... Someone who's listening to this and you don't believe us, just go watch the movie and then you'll believe us. It, it's, it's, it's seriously great. We're, uh, we're a long way, just to reiterate, we're a long way from you giving up on the franchise almost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, this versus the Too Fast, Too Furious, totally different. Totally different feeling towards it entirely. Totally different feeling towards Brian O'Connor and I didn't think that my feelings about him were uh, redeemable. Yeah, I, I think it's great. So I, I'm very, very impressed. Do you have any other thoughts before we move on to the next segment? No, I, uh, I feel like we've painted a pretty good picture about how we feel. <laughs> yeah, me too. I actually feel like, you know, having a podcast, I know you can definitely write to this. There's things that you want to say about a film. And no matter how much time you prepare, how much you script out, Sometimes at the end of the day, I'm like, I didn't quite portray how I feel. And, I, and genuinely, even before you said it, at the end of that conversation, I was like, wow, like, that is an accurate depiction of how I feel about this movie. And uh, it feels good to like, successfully explain things. So with that in mind, we'll move on to the next segment, Binge Points. So these are Easter eggs, details, trivia, behind the scenes stuff, or other random things we want to mention that won't fit in anywhere else. I'll start it off by kind of mentioning something that you talked about earlier. That four-way drag race between the cop cars. The one of the cars, the police lights turn on. It's the car that Roman is in. Um, that was completely accidental. Um, the Dodge, Dodge had just released that particular model of the Charger, and so some of the cars that they were using on sets were prototypes, and so they were a little bit faulty. And the police lights turned on as a malfunction, like they actually turned on when they were filming, but accidentally. They weren't supposed to. It wasn't in the script, but they just kept filming, you know, because that's what you do on a movie. After filming, they looked at it and they're like, no, we're going to keep it because that feels like Roman, like something that the character of Roman would do. And I I, I think it adds to it perfectly because it really does. Like when when they turned on, I was like, oh, yeah, like that's something Roman would do. Like it it felt it 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 made it fun. Like it kind of felt like you were kind of with your friends and like, oh, yeah, you're like on the inside of how people tick. It was fun to see that. And then to know that that was a mistake is even better. Yeah, no, it, it, it did. Like you said, it, a simple error, so to speak, felt like something this character would do. So again, it's like, yeah, we just got to leave it in there. And that's so funny. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever actually seen it, but it, one of the things that blows my mind about this movie you mentioned it is that vault scene. Have you actually watched the how it was made video? I, I've seen clips of it. I know like very little of it. I know that there was like this is what I know. I know that they actually dragged a safe. Like there were two cars. Like there was like three or four versions of the safe. One of them was actually pulled by two chargers. Another one was like like a a, a safe that was like built around a, a a small car that someone was driving. And then there was another one that I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Then there's the one that, like, when it rolls through the bank, that was, like, an actual safe that they, like, catapulted and actually rolled through the bank. But that's all I know. I haven't, like, I don't know which one's which when I'm watching it. I just know that that, that happened. 
Yeah, the safe is like a real 9,000 pound vault. Oh, really? It, yeah, is oh used in 98% of the scene. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. You, you might think that it's CGI, you know, oh, that's all abundantly CGI. Like, no. Some of the things that happened during that scene were like, not planned when it rolled through the concrete pillars like it wasn't planned at all like oh like right at the beginning when it kind of like yeah. drifts to this oh my really yeah F like that just happened um that video for anybody that has seen fast five or loves that scene or you know maybe you watch fast five because of this episode i i cannot honestly stress enough how to like watch that video the and it's called um you know, it's just behind the scenes, fast five vault chase. Watch that video in its entirety because it's it's fascinating how real it actually is. It's incredible that they did this. Oh, I, I, and I, all of the driving is real. Every single shot of driving footage is real. Yeah, I I remember. There was there's a corridor crew in Greater YouTube channel where they do their stuntman react series, and one of the episodes they did was they had a professional driver on the episode, and they reacted to this clip, and he talked a lot about it. I don't remember much of the things he said, but he like really broke down the complexity of the drivers of the two chargers and how difficult it was for them, and how serious their driving had to be, how they had to drive in unison with each other. Obviously, I don't remember the things he said, but listening to that was fascinating. Like in that moment, I remember being like, wow, that like really is impressive, the amount of work that went into that. And I think it's super cool that there was one of the complaints was the overuse of CGI. And so Justin Lin and, and the team was like, hey, we're going to devote a serious amount to shooting things practically, which I think is interesting. I was researching about it. Apparently, this film was, it was originally. Going, it had a, a schedule of two months, which I think is a ridiculously short amount of time, but two months, and it actually ran over schedule, ended up taking about six months, and the reason it was only supposed to take two months is because they had three different film units filming simultaneously. So, like, three different crews were filming for six whole months. That's, like, equivalent of 18 months of work <laughs> to get these things, and it, it, like, pays off. Another practical stunt that was done the very, very beginning when that flatbed truck slams into the moving train, 100% practical. No CGI. That's not miniatures. It's an actual flatbed truck colliding into a train so heavily that it almost derailed the train. As you can see in the film, like the train almost tips over. That, that was a real train that was almost derailed. I'm like, what? Who approved that? Like, who, who has a train that's like, oh yeah, sure, drive into it, you know, almost derail it and destroy everything in its vicinity. Like, how did they get that approved? It's crazy. And the thing is, you like feel it. You feel the, the like force behind all of that in the moment. Yeah, no, again, it's, it's all very real. Like as ridiculous as some of this seems, some of it does feel incredibly real because they shot it real. Yeah. Crazy me, which again, like, that's not something that I thought would have happened for a Fast and Furious movie. Like, I, I, I'm I, curious, though, with how this film went over schedule. I have no... I, I didn't look. I intentionally waited to look. I have the idea that that made Universal, because that was probably really expensive. I mean, like, legitimately. Like, that's sweet that we got that in the movie, but from, like, a behind-the-scenes type thing, like, that, that probably didn't make the producers very happy. And it makes me assume that Justin Lin was dropped as a director after this, and it went back to a lot more CGI in the sixth film. Am I right in guessing that, or am I way off? Um, no, no. Um, I mean, you can be upset because, yeah, I mean, it was supposed to shoot for two months, and it ended up taking five. But money always talks, and this movie made money. Um, True. so making money can forgive certain things so well said yeah um so yeah there was some there were some issues but not to the degree of justin lynn missing out because of this um 
there were some other factors with him and some things that he was doing where it just didn't line up. Um, but yeah, it didn't derail really anything. Cause again, when you make more money than the, you know, than the last one and, you know, not only does domestic numbers go up, international numbers go up and then fans are calling like, yeah, we really want to see the next one. And tracking is showing like, Oh, well a six one would do even better. It's like, yeah, all's forgiven. <laughs> That's a good point. I was just looking at the box office. This had a budget of 125 million. Uh, made 626 million worldwide. Uh, that's a good return. That that is a great return on this film. You know, 200 mi- over 200 million domestically. That's really impressive. Uh, I I think I was reading somewhere that at the time this was the highest grossing film of the franchise and like in the top 10 for the highest grossing films in 2011. You know, th- this is where the Fast and Furious franchise became a big shot at the box office. Starts here with Fast Five, which is interesting. It, it Yeah, it really does. It, it definitely starts to kick off the, the box off returns. And, you know, even though Fast and the Furious uh, did good at the box office, yeah, this started the, hmm, well, this is make, like, this is really bankable. Whoa, this is really bankable. Um, it, it started with Fast Five. So I'm also curious. I'm trying to understand the timeline. Obviously, there were some hints at the end. I'm, I got totally distracted based on what you were saying, but I was thinking about Fast Six, and I was like, wait, which one is it where Tokyo Drift is after it? Like, is Tokyo Drift after this, or is it after Six, or Seven, or Eight, or Nine? Like, where is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the timeline for these movies actually when, you know, everything is like said and done, so to speak, because nine and then 10 parts one and two um, will not have any bearing on where these movies are now in the order. But um, it technically goes the Fast and the Furious, which is the first one, Too Fast, Too Furious, Fast and Furious, which is the fourth, Fast Five, Fast and Furious Six, and Tokyo Drift chronologically actually takes place after Fast and Furious Six. Oh, oh! I think you mentioned that before, it, and it like parts of it cross over with Furious Seven, right? Uh, yeah. There's some, yeah. There's some crossover uh, effect in uh in there. Okay, you did mention that. I apologize, I forgot. Okay, all right, that's making sense in my head now. Okay, there was other one other thing that I wanted to talk about the binge point because I was so curious about this that I went and did a lot of research because you mentioned that Vin Diesel was recommended by a fan to have Dwayne Johnson show up. Apparently, the role of Hobbs was originally going to play, be played by Tommy Lee Jones, which, <laughs> that would be a totally different movie. Like, completely. Uh, let me tell you what, again, I guess never say never, but I think I can safely say, let me tell you what I wouldn't be interested in seeing a face-off between Vin Diesel and Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Or even them trying to explain how that would be a fist fight. Like, no thanks. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Um, thank God for fan suggestions. Yeah. Apparently it was a girl named John Kelly. Uh, and she was just like, I would love to see the two of you work together on screen. So, Vin Diesel was like, okay, I'll get him. <laughs> right, right, awesome. right? Like, oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks to this random person who posted on the Fast and Furious Facebook page. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being part of the Facebook group. So, um, I'm just reading through some other binge points notes I have here. That other, also in the opening, when Dom and Paul Walker drive off the cliff in that car. I don't know what car it was. I'm not a car person. Uh, that the was the Stingray. Thank you, the Stingray. That was a sweet car, by the way. That was also done for real. Obviously, I don't know the location, but two stunt men were in a car that was driven off a cliff, and they had to jump out of it into water. Like, like really? <laughs> like, again, who approved that? Like, oh yeah, you know, get in the car, drive off the cliff, jump out, and land in the water. You'll be fine. Like, don't worry about the car potentially landing on you, or you know, drowning, or face planning, or you know, just you know, just drive off. You know, you're you're fine. Yeah, like, don't worry about it. This, this will all work out. 
Yeah, it's your job. You're a stuntman. You can do it. <laughs> um, the other thing that I have to add on, but it's mainly just because I was thinking about the Dark Knight because I was listening to your episode. When Dom lights the money on fire, I was like, it is about sending a message. He gets it. And I just started like <laughs> laughing to myself like, Dom gets it. I just thought that was cool. Like, where did you, where, where did you two exchange numbers? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was awesome. I, I just started chuckling to myself, you know. So, me by myself watching Fast Five, cracking up at my own jokes. What a life. <laughs> right? <laughs> Good old Fast Five. Um, yeah, those are all the binge points I got. Do you have any others? Uh, no, I think, uh, I, I think you accurately uh, depicted the, the ones that, uh, <laughs> just again are like just funny to think about yeah i mean i and i also just think it's great that the franchise had made enough money and had enough you know clout so to speak to be able to get these ridiculous things approved you know like you and me aren't going to show up to universal and be like hey can you pay for us to crash a flatbed truck into a train like for real <laughs> you know I, and i i who would i would have never thought that that something that started with the Fast and the Furious would ever have the ability to lead to this. You know, I don't think anybody ever thought that. And I, I'm grateful that we are here because it's been fun. Yeah, definitely. Tons, tons of fun. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next segment, Lease and Likes. I'll let you go first. I'll have you talk about your least favorite scene, if you have one. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, my least favorite scene is really like the only thing I don't like about this movie <laughs> is I, I think it's just and it's so weird that this is actually in this movie because it it seemed to have gotten away from a lot of this and especially for for this character uh, is the scene with um, Gal Gadot where they're trying to get, um, you know, a way to unlock the vault <laughs> and it, it's pretty cheesy and it's just like eh, that's it's a pretty good miss in a movie that's a lot of fun um it, it's just it's ridiculous it's you know her character regardless of like kind of how you feel about her i i think i remember you saying like you're not really a fan of her so to speak you don't think she's particularly that great but again to like use the trope of women in that role and everything it it seemed like the franchise was getting away from that and to have one scene like focus on that just it felt like a literally myth. yeah like it felt like a huge miss to me um and an otherwise pretty stellar movie um and I, I did say the word stellar because, again, it's just it's fun. So that's definitely like my least favorite thing about this movie. Yeah, I had two fa scenes that would be my least favorite. And that one was definitely the one that I was going to mention because that was the other thing. I forgot to mention that in Live Up. That, that was a scene that I knew about. It was in the Fast and Furious saga. I had no idea where it was. But just thinking about it, I assumed it was near the beginning, you know, in the early 2000s. I felt like that fit the maturity of a film that was about cars in the early 2000s. And then when it didn't happen in whatever one she shows up in first, I think Fast and Furious, when it didn't happen in that one, I was like, this happens after that? Like, this happens into the 2010s? And I was kind of shocked. And then when it happened in this movie, like, it got to that scene, they were talking about the handprint, and it showed her sitting there. I was like, oh, no. Like, like before she gets up to walk, when her and Han are sitting there, I was like, oh, no, it's in this movie? Like, come on, really? So so I agree. That that was definitely a low point that was like, what? And that also felt so out of left field. Like, uh, yeah, I just, I don't have anything else to say about it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, you assembled the team, and it was like, we need somebody with skills. We need somebody that can talk their way out of anything. And we need someone who looks good in a bikini. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I forgot. Like, I didn't remember hearing that line when you were assembling the team that you would need her so that some guy could grope her back end. Like, so yeah, yeah. it's just it, it's totally uh, unnecessary, and it it definitely seemed odd that it was in the script and then got filmed and then somebody didn't. It, it seems like somebody would have been like we can go back and probably figure out a way to to get this like 
info without this scene. But yeah. it is what it is at this point, and it's it's done. But yeah, definitely the the weak point for me. The other one that I was going to mention that, and again, this isn't like a least favorite. It was just like, oh man, like I I felt kind of cheated. Was when they talk about going to get a fast car and Dom and Brian show up at the street race. And I, I, I'll also talk about that in a positive way. I love that they looked around and Dom was like, home sweet home. Like that felt like, I don't know, super subtle thing that I really, really liked. I thought that was sweet. But later they, they, they talk about how they're going to race that, I think it was a Porsche, that blue Porsche that they were going to race a guy for. And they, so they talk about who's going to win or whatever. And then it just shows them pulling up with it. I was like, oh man, I would have loved to see that. But at the same time, I'm glad that they didn't show it because it made the last chase scene at the end a lot more fun. And it also kind of broke the way the film away from like the generic street race after street race after street race that so much of the rest of the franchise has been. So like I'm kind of on both sides of it where like I appreciate the restraint and the willingness to just like poke fun at it and just kind of be like, oh yeah, we won. But I'm also like, oh man, like that would have been fun to see because I've gotten used to seeing that. So I'm still kind of, flipping flip flopping on that one yeah no i i would definitely agree there um uh are we at the point where move on to favorite scene oh yeah definitely take it away yeah um i mean i have a couple um for various reasons i mentioned it earlier obviously i i really enjoy the scene where mia you know tells brian that she's pregnant i like that scene there's again i feel genuine emotion there that you feel good for these two characters in this universe that they're going to have a baby. I like that. I do like the team. I love the scene of the team getting together and Roman and Tej just kind of going back and forth. I even love like the little odd masculine stare off between Dom and Roman when Brian's like, this is my boy Roman, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's the yeah. guy I pulled the job with in Miami. And like, they're just staring at each other. Like Romans, like he was my boy before yours. Like, <laughs> like it's <laughs> yeah. just this weird thing that I always, when I see this movie, I look at it and I'm like, why are you two staring each other down like that? You're supposed to be like on the same team right now, but it's almost like a, he was my friend before yours. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's weird. The tension that's in that scene between them. Um, so it just makes me chuckle. Uh, I like that scene. Obviously the scene when Hobbs first confronts diesel and I love when diesel just says, this is Brazil. And like, everybody just pulls guns on the, (laughs) like on the, what is he? He's an FBI agent in this movie. I I can't remember silly, but like, it's just such a funny scene that, all these random civilians just pull guns on these, uh, on these officers. And it's like, it works so well too. Right. Like boss, we got to go. That's a lot of heat. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Um, you know, uh, and then again, the fight scene between Dom and Hobbs is again, it's, it's fun. It's well filmed. Um, cause you can see what's going on. And then the ending bank vault chase scene is, it's so well crafted. It's so well done. And then the clever little trick where you find out that, uh, well, no wonder why they leave the vault behind because they got it. Um, I just, I love everything about that scene and there's, there's just a lot of really good moments, but those are, those are some of my faves. Yeah. There's, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to a favorite scene. Um, all the ones that you mentioned, I love, the the other one that I really really love that felt very Ocean's Eleven to me is when they're trying they're in like that practice course with all the different cars they have trying to beat the cameras like over and over and over again when they're looking at the cameras for the first time and Han's like man we got a hard right and a hairpin we're gonna need an agile car like I, first off I love that the guy who later goes on to be in Tokyo Drift was the one to notice the turns super subtle thing that was like yeah that's fun characterization but that montage of them training was a blast to watch. Like I was, I was really having a fun time then. Uh, you all, you already mentioned the, some other scenes, but I, I have to mention again, that the, the moments between Brian and Mia, I felt like really, really led to a strong relationship with them. Even, especially the way that the rest of the group reacted when they found out that she was pregnant. I just, like, I really, really felt that. And I love 
that everybody's kind of celebrating and Brian goes up and stands next to Dom. And, and, and there's other moments where Dom's seen, you know, his family, so to speak, interact and he's just kind of like standing up above on this thing and he just smiles with like the weirdest Vin Diesel smile ever. But it it, it, it just, it, it really, really makes me fall in love with his family and, and adopt them, like you said. And it's really great. I also love the scene where Brian wins the quarter mile, the million dollar quarter mile. That was super fun. I, I, I could go on and on. That The end scene. Another thing is I love that, this is a super small detail, but I love that Hobbs team drives through the streets of the Brazil fast enough that they're constantly getting air off the hills. Like, <laughs> what the heck? I just love that. I think it's so great. But I, I mean, I love the way he shows up and he just kind of like owns the place. And he just, I don't know. I, I instantly fell in love with the character of Hobbs. And it makes me, I, I don't think I'll have time for it in the schedule before Fast 9. But it makes me excited to see Hobbs and Shaw. I have no idea if it's good or not. But I just think that Dwayne Johnson as his character seems like a lot of fun. Oh, he, he definitely like owns the screen when he's on it. I mean, this is, you know, uh, this was before his like, peak peak but man this is where you could really start telling like this guy's this guy's got it and if you know anything about Dwayne Johnson holy you know the guy's work ethic what he puts into a character what he puts into anything he does in his life man it it translates on screen and you can't just you can't help but just be glued to this individual oh yeah yeah. he's he's an animal you know like even the the physical shape that he got himself in to be this physical presence. Like he makes Vin Diesel look like a twig. (laughs) Vin Diesel is a very large man. And I just, I think that it's great. Um, Yeah. He, he really does command the screen. Just a side note about that. This is totally random, but you made me think of this. I just love the way Dwayne Johnson acts. You know, there's this, if you've seen the Jumanji films, which if you're listening to this episode and you haven't seen Jumanji, like the new ones, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, I think is what the first the first new one is called. Man, it's so hard to reference those. Uh, with Dwayne and, and, and Jack Black and all those people. Um, is hilarious. That's, that's a hilarious movie. But there's one scene where Dwayne Johnson in it and they're in the jungle. And he's like, it's hot. And he says hot in the funniest way. I quote that at least like once a week, especially now because it's like super hot here in Utah. But I don't know. There's something about like Dwayne Johnson just like consuming the whole image of the screen saying that it's hot that doesn't leave my brain. So I don't know what that had to do with anything, but whatever. You get enough. <laughs> There's a sneak inside my weird head. That, again, quick little sidebar. Totally that first one. And I, I love the second one too. Absolute sleeper hit for me when the first movie, Jumanji, came out. I was like, I went and saw it with um, my family and I remember it was me, my mom, uh, my two kids and that movie, you know, was done and we all were just like, how was that so good? Like it was just genuinely funny and man, I was so enthralled with that movie and just such a sleeper hit for me when the first one came out that I was just like, holy cow, was this such a good movie? So yeah, I mean, he's, He's just awesome. I, I love watching that guy. He's just got such a screen presence. But yeah, there, there's something about him that you can't help but just like be enthralled with him when he's oh, on yeah. screen. Yeah, great enthralled. Great cho- word choice. But now I know that when I do the Jumanji episode, that I got to bring you back. <laughs> so, um, any other great scenes that you want to mention? Any other likes? Um, just a little subtle thing. Uh, you mentioned the, you know, when they come back, um, from the, the million dollar heist and everything like that, I really like, and it's so subtle, but when they get out of the cars and you can see like Brian gets out and he's, he's got like that swagger, his chest is kind of puffed out and yeah. Dom says to him, good race O'Connor. And he's like, thanks Dom. Like, it's just so to me. It's funny to see the fact that like Brian still like in a racing form wanted Dom's approval. And it seemed like it felt like to that character, 
like it felt really good that he got this compliment from Dom on the race, but then to just kind of be like, yeah, your man threw off the gas. <laughs> like, he's yeah. like, no, like, no way. That's, that's BS. <laughs> and he's like, oh, come on. Like, now I got to, tr- like, now I have to try and beat him again. Um, yeah. It's subtle, but when you follow the characters, I just, I feel like it's some of those little subtle touches um, that, again, make you, fall in love with this family um, and understand some of the things that again are subtle, but I feel like you pick up on them because of the fact that you're rooting for these characters as a group and individually. Yeah. Even the way that like a little bit later where they're joking about how it was like a baby gift or whatever. And uh, Brian goes and stand next to Dom and he's like, he's like, he he says, I'm like, do you know what they're saying? And Dom's like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Like, I just love those little moments that just th- there's so many of them in this film too. I-, I could sit here and go on and on and on, but I yeah, you know, another great scene that I have to mention is I love the brawl between Dom and Hobbs and at the end that it ends with like a pipe wrench and I love the ending of that fight for Dom. I thought that was like I like I said in my two cents, every single moment really feels like it's built around growth and motivation of a character and not even just growth, but like, like really great characterization and character building and character growth. And I felt like that was one of those moments. that's like that, that, you know, it could have not gone well and it goes very, very well for the character and not just like that one single moment isolated, but everything that leads up to that moment was just like, yes, this is Dom over the course of events that we are to now, you know, it, it makes you once again, adopt this family that much more. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, when, you know, when that scene ends after the brawl and it's, he's going to hit him with the pipe and he slams it down next to his head. Um, I, I just really like it because, you know, there's a, like you said, it feels like there's a growth there for Dom where he's like, you know, he's got that alpha male mentality where you're not going to beat me, But he just sits there and, you know, Mia's like, Dom, don't. And he doesn't he doesn't want that to be what she sees. And he also understands that if I'm going to be an alpha male and win this, I'm going to have to do something that I actually don't want to do. And just, you know, he at that point is like, well, I I just got to give myself up. Um, I like that. I think that's actually you know, an earned moment and an insight into Dom and, you know, how he actually feels about what he actually wants to be. Yeah, very, very well said. I I think that couldn't have said it better. I I had a thought that I'm trying to remember. I lost it for a second. Hold on. Let me see if I can remember it. Um, Oh, it's going to drive me nuts if I don't remember it. Gosh, dang it. I hate it when this happens. Okay, I can't re- I genuinely can't remember. And it's on like the tip of my tongue too. Oh, come on. I hate it when this happens. Oh well. Doesn't matter. Um now I forgot what else I was gonna say. Oh yeah, I just it Oh, I remember. I remember my thought. Oh, this is the best. Okay. The other scene that I really have to mention is that the entire time, like I knew, I knew that that Hobbes works with was a part of this fast family, so to speak, at some point. And so when he shows up as a cop that's hunting them down or the FBI agent, I was like, what? Like, how does that work? How do they become a team? And I was continually like, okay, this is, this is going to be dumb. Like, something's going to get him to flip. You know, is it just going to be like, oh, they decide like, oh, yeah, let's take down this guy who's even worse than us together. Like, that'd be really stupid. And so I love the scene, this is going to sound weird, where Hobbs' team dies and that that's his motivation to be willing to go after Reyes. I thought like that fit everything we had seen about the character of Hobbes for the short time in the film so far. Additionally, I love the slow-mo shot of Vin Diesel walking up with a shotgun. (laughs) Like, it's so dumb in the best way. Like, when it's happening, I'm like, yes, like, that is what's going on. I just, I thought it was awesome. That way that scene is filmed and and put together. Um, Yeah. That's a great scene, both for the the motivations of Hobbs and how it affects him, but also for the relationship that Dom and Hobbs form right there. 
and what it shows about the nature of this fast family. I thought it was great. I love that scene too. So um, I think that's enough favorite scenes. If we don't stop, I think we'll both keep talking. So we'll move on to the very, very last segment here, Franchise Inquiry. So this is, instead of following, we're talking about the messages and meanings, which we have done anyway. We're gonna. I've switched it up to Franchise Inquiry, where we talk about why this strange franchise that started out as a street racing film with light speed inducing nitrous is now an incredibly endearing and fun and successful franchise and, and how it has been able to do this particularly what this film had a role to play in it and i think we've talked about this a lot but i think that this is one of the many many films that makes this family and the idea of family not a joke and that is incredibly important for the long-term success of it yeah, I think, you know, obviously, like you said, we've talked about it, but, you know, talking about it with you and this being the first time that you've seen these movies, it's clear that, you know, when I've been asked this question before on these episodes, I think about the first and even though the second movie is, you know, not good at all, it's my least favorite of these movies and everything. Um, and even the fourth one, I can't help but you know i i can't help but think about what i know about this franchise and why i was saying well family and this and chemistry and you know the way you've been talking yeah it's this is where it all starts coming together of oh yeah i actually wait when did this happen when when did i care what happens to these characters like Right. Why, like, how am I emotionally invested in this? Why do I feel good for them? Why do I feel sad right now or whatever emotion, you know, this series will bring to you? Because I'm sure there's a lot of them. Um, you know, I am not in any way, shape or fan or a fan um, <laughs> a, like I am not in any way, shape or form like a super fan that think these are the greatest thing ever. And certainly there's there's some fans that just you know, are absolutely head over heels about this franchise. And again, a more power to them. Uh, when I do reviews and shows and talk, um, I'm not the person to say, well, you like this too much and that's ridiculous. Like, no, great power to you. I probably like something that somebody thinks, I don't understand how you can like that, but I don't need it to be like, uh, you need to listen to my idea about why you shouldn't like it. So I'm sure there's people that feel even stronger about these characters than I do, but man, do I feel like I care about these characters. And this is the movie where, again, it pushes it over the top for me where I started to really care about what happens to this universe. Oh yeah. I, I agree. I think it's, it's very, very, I, I think that it would change how I would go, like if knowing what I know now and being invested in this family and caring about them, particularly because of this film and all that they've gone through to get here, and I'm sure even so moving forward, if I were to go back and see the first film again, the feelings would be very, very different. And I think that that's really impressive for a film, like one film of a franchise to be a standing point in how it affects everything both retroactively but also moving forward I, I think it's it's great the other thing that i think that's made this franchise so successful is how it's been able to adapt i think that many of us would have gotten sick not would have we did get sick of street racing that's not edited super where great and it's kind of annoying over and over and over and over again there's only so many ways that you can spice that up and make it interesting and I appreciate the restraint in this film and like, hey, well, let's make it something different, but not abandon what it is. Like, like it's not like, oh, suddenly these characters are going to the moon. You know, like, like it feels like a legitimate progression of events while also being true to the talents and skills and interests that these characters already have. And it's it makes this film fun and not just like, well, that was so out of left field. It was ridiculous, you know, like. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more so yeah any other thoughts about this particular film i feel like we've kind of done it throughout the entire episode but any other thoughts about this film and its impact on the the saga and its success yeah i mean i just 
uh, again, not to, to beat a dead horse, but it just does such a good job of making this, it, you know, this is where the fun really kicked in because although I liked fast and furious, the fourth one, um, it's not fun. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not yeah. like, Oh my God, this is fun. And this is funny. And this like, no, like this is fun. It's a fun entry but still has time for tension, for good action, great humor. Um, and, and it again, it adapted. It knew, which is super hard to do, it knew what it needed to be. But again, you just, you have to give credit because, like we've talked about, Diesel listened to fans. Like, this is a franchise for fans made by fans in a way of speaking because they've made suggestions. He's listened credit to, you know, from what I can gather from things credit to universal for allowing fans to have influence and allowing, you know, Vin Diesel and Paul Walker at the time and whoever else you know, was involved to really kind of have the reins and say, look, this is, you know, this is what we need to be. It's refreshing because you've seen it before with so many studios where, you know, regardless of what you think, you know, look at the suicide squad from DC and well, well, guardians of the galaxy came out and we went and changed the entire tone of suicide squad because, Oh, we think this is what it needs to be instead of, you know, letting the movie be probably what it should have been and having it be successful. Um, you know, it was the studio that said, eh, the fans probably don't know what they want. We know what they want. And this is a franchise that hasn't done that. Yeah, I think we kind of joked about it earlier how different this movie would be with Tommy Lee Jones instead of Dwayne Johnson. And Dwayne Johnson is here throughout the entire franchise to have something like Hobbs and Shaw's be successful because of the way they were willing to listen to fans and take their enjoyment of it seriously. The other thing that I'll add, just kind of to close out the franchise inquiry segment here, I know what's coming in Furious 7. Like, I just know. I've seen that scene of the fork in the road a lot. And I know that it's going to wreck me because of this film. I, I think I would have cared. Like it, it would have, I would have felt emotion. Like I'm not a heartless person. I definitely would have felt something, but I don't think it would have as felt personal as I know it's going to be because of the bonding that I have felt in this film alone. Like, like Brian and Dom have kind of always felt like friends that kind of don't like each other, but have to get along because of their together type of thing, you know, like that person you have to sit next to in school or whatever, up until this point, now they genuinely feel like brothers. And I'm not looking forward to Furious 7, but I am at the same time. So I, I think that this film particularly makes all of that stronger. So, yeah. Yeah, great point. Uh, I, I'm just prepared to be wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i've heard so we'll move on to the very last segment here because i'm also starting to lose my voice i've been talking too much i guess late, lately but anyway on to the last segment here so to speak it's not a segment more of a closeout of the segment that happened earlier where we reveal the rotten so this is where we're going to rate the film out of five reels to carry over the tradition from Matt's show whoever has the lower rating is the rotten which I mean, it's not really a competition because we both talked about how there's not really a run. Matt, I will let you go first with, uh, with your five reels and any closing thoughts about the film. All right. Uh, so, reels, I am going with 4.85. Um, I don't know how you get a canister down to that percentage, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> That would be if I had to just minuscule it to the the most common number I can. 4.85 reels. My lasting thoughts of this movie are, you know, again, this is, you know, we talked about it in an earlier segment. This is something I would own 
just because this is a standalone. If it was a standalone movie, I didn't like the franchise going forward or previous or anything like that. That's my lasting impression of this movie is that this is something that if I owned one fast and the furious movie, you know, this could be it. Um, it's just so fun. It's easy on a rewatch. It doesn't lose any of its appeal, which again is very hard to do. Even some of my favorite movies, there's some things that just lose a slight edge. Uh, this is not one of the movies. I love that it lets me just have fun, but then also can bring me to somewhat of a serious tone. And then again, just laugh out loud over you stole four cop cars and you're seriously going to drag race them. Like, <laughs> Oh, I, like I, I just love how it lets me have a good time and kick back. I agree. Great, great, real rating so i will finish out the rating here then and i i guess in turn reveal myself as the rotten for giving it just a solid solid 4.5 i think that a rewatch would really increase that maybe to 4.867 you know just to barely edge out or whatever but I, you know because for rating films like rewatchability is huge for me and because i love being able to rewatch a film and having it not lose its oomph and from what you say, it sounds like this one doesn't. And I'm sure that it does. I'm just not 100% sure because I haven't experienced it yet, you know. But from the first watch, I'm, if you couldn't tell through this episode, I was kind of blown away by how much I liked it. So, so it's just a solid 4.5. This really is just a great film to watch. And uh, I had no interest in this franchise, and now I do. And this was really, really engaging. And, and franchise or not, this is still the film that I would enjoy on my own because it kind of combines so many elements that are really, really fun, in addition to having great performances and, and some great heart to it and all that we've talked about. So well, that is kind of it. This has been a long episode, almost an hour and a half. I never thought that a Fast and Furious episode would be this long that I would have this much to say, but that's what happens. I really, really do appreciate you taking the time to be here, Matt. I know that's late for you. I know that you had a long day at work. So I just, again, because I appreciate you and because I love your show, I want to give you one last chance to, uh, to plug your show. Uh, I mean, this again, what a what a long way we've come from, you know, geez, wanting to do the too fast, too furious episode. Like, all right, we can talk about it for seven minutes. Can we get out of here, please? Like to <laughs> like, oh, my God, I love to talk like, oh, I want to talk about fast five. And I just, you know, could keep going. But no, I mean, it, it's been a blast doing this episode. Thank you so much. I love collaborating with you it's it's always a great time but uh again if for any listeners of this show uh i'm matt from matt goes to the movies harrison is gracious enough to always plug my show in his show notes even in you know don't think i don't see it with your standalone episodes like cruella and everything like that that there's a link for me right in your show notes which is absolutely amazing it's so cool that you do that so you know, any listeners that have also picked up my show because of that, I sincerely thank Harrison. I thank you guys for being part of this process with me because it's it's kind of funny that, you know, anybody would even listen to a show. I don't know if you ever feel like that, Harrison, like that. Oh, yeah. I like that. I do like it's just it's a funny thing to think about, but I'm humbled by it. I sincerely appreciate it. I look forward to bringing more episodes. Uh, one of those, like I mentioned earlier, will be Spiral from the Book of Saw. We're doing the Loki series. I've got um, Equilibrium coming out, a movie with Christian Bale. I will very soon, by the end of this month, be releasing The Dark Knight Rises um, to complete my Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy. And there's a couple other things in the pipeline that I'm working out before I make announcements, but I look forward to, to making some announcements of what else is going to be coming to the show. Cause I'm really excited about it. Oh, uh, hearing you talk about that. I'm very, very excited. And I totally know what you mean. It's, it's always interesting releasing your thoughts about a film or your creation, whatever it is into the void of the internet and, you know, waiting for some response back and the response that has come from you in the friendship that we've developed has been one of the best things that's come out of this. So I, I really, really do appreciate you being here and how fun it's been to be on your show and have you here. 
I will plug Matt's show one more time by mentioning the Loki episodes we're doing, particularly the episode we just recorded yesterday for the second Loki episode, Loki, uh, I think the episode title was The Variant, if I remember right. That was one of the funnest and funniest episodes I've ever been a part of. Like that, that particularly like the last few minutes of it was just hilarious. So if you've been enjoying the Loki series and you want to find a place to start with Matt's show, I recommend that episode because it was a roar of a time. So thanks for letting me be a part of that, Matt. And thank you again for being here. Yeah, thank you, man. It's been it's it's always a pleasure. Yeah. And and uh, you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate that you appreciate that your your link is always in the show notes. But as Vin Diesel says, there's always room for family. <laughs> uh, uh, it, seriously, though, I, of course. So thank you so much, Matt, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for leaving reviews on Podchaser, for sharing the show, for reacting. Let me know what you think about it. And thanks for downloading and enjoying this. Like I just said, sometimes it's a little bit concerning l- releasing your thoughts and your creation out into the void of the internet and being able to know that people are downloading it and finding it and hopefully enjoying it is something that is fulfilling in life to to know that people appreciate things that you do and not in like a conceited or arrogant way, but I just genuinely appreciate all of you for downloading and listening to the show. I had no idea that anyone would ever be interested in this and however many there are or are not, I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you so much. But once again, my name is Harrison. This is The Basin Binge, but that is all for now. Ciao, ciao.